Hi, in this lecture we're going to speak about blount disease or tibia vera. The objectives of the lecture is we're going to speak about the pathology, clinical presentation, signs and symptoms, and the x-ray pictures of the blount disease. And we're going to speak about the difference, how to differentiate between blount disease and normal physiologic varus, which happens in most kids. And then we're going to speak about the two types of the blount disease, including the infantile and the adolescent blount disease. And then we're going to speak about the outline for the treatment of blount disease. A good source that you can use is this book, Pediatric Orthopedic and Sport Medicine. This is the second edition of our previous book, edited by myself, Dr. Naga, and Dr. Abdu. Also, a good lecture to watch is the Genoverum lecture, uh, which speaks about different causes of Genoverum and bow leg, and uh, of course, including the Blount disease. So what is Blount disease? Blount disease is a developmental deformity. It's not congenital. So the child is not born with uh, Blount disease. It is a developmental deformity. And this develop developmental deformity results from abnormal growth of the proximal uh, uh, tibial growth plate or proximal tibial physis on the medial side. So the medial part of the proximal tibial physis will not be growing uh, in the uh, normal uh, way. So there will be continued growth from the lateral side and less growth from the medial side. This will result in the limb pointing inward or developing various deformity. And in most cases, there will be associated internal tibial torsion. So blount disease, it's a developmental deformity. It's not congenital. And it is uh, it results from abnormal growth of the proximal tibial medial physis. So this is the growth plate, which we call it the physis. And the proximal part, the, the medial part of the proximal tibial physis is not growing as it's is supposed to do. Uh, there is still growth from the lateral side. So if you grow from here with lost growth here, you will have the varus deformity. And um, in most cases, there will be also associated internal tibial torsion. There is two types of the blount disease, infantile and adolescent. First type of blount disease is the infantile type. It occurs in infants and young children, usually between the age of uh, two to four years old. It's more common in black obese infants. And the infantile type is more progressive than the adolescent type. Why? Because the infants and young kids have more growth potential. So if there is disease that affects their growth, this will lead to more progressive disease than, uh, than if it occurs in the adolescent patient, which have much less growth remaining. And the clinical presentation in this case will be progressive genoverum. You can see this patient here. She has progressive genoverum, progressive bowing of the leg with internal rotation of the lower leg. You can see here that the patient has a bow leg in both sides. And also in the same time, not only bowing of the leg, the internal rotation. So you can see the foot in both sides is internal rotating so two deformities the bowing of the leg which is the various deformity and the intoing which is the internal tibial torsion or the internal rotation of the tibia is the second deformity so most cases of the infantile type are bilateral as the picture that we saw in the previous slide if it's unilateral uh, uh, a case there may be associated with leg length discrepancy meaning that the affected side the side that has various is shorter than the other side uh, so this is another case here of bilateral genoverum uh, affecting uh, right and left and it's blount disease due to as we said disturbance of the growth of the medial uh, uh, side of the proximal tibial physis as you can see here in the x-ray so you can see the obvious genoverum the obvious uh, bowing of the leg so infantile type it happens in small children usually less than uh, five years old uh, it's usually bilateral mm, uh, if it's unilateral it can be associated with limb length discrepancy it is very progressive uh, because the uh, infantile uh, patients has more uh, growth uh, potential so if there is any growth disease any disease affecting their growth um, it, uh, it will be more progressive than the adolescent type now, after we talked about the pathology and the clinical presentation of infantile type, we'd like to speak about the radiographs, the X-ray picture of this disease. First, you'd like to differentiate between mild cases of infantile um, tibia vera or infantile blount and the physiologic genoverum, which is extremely common and happens in uh, most kids. 
The thing that we use most of the time is something called metaphysical diaphysical angle. Metaphysical diaphysical angle, and that's what we're going to describe now. The metaphysical diaphysical angle, it is the angle between the metaphysis and the perpendicular of the diaphysis. So this is the metaphysis in which we use the widest part here of the metaphysis and the perpendicular on the diaphysis. The easiest thing is to use the lateral border of the tibia and you draw perpendicular line to that. So the angle between the perpendicular to the diaphysis and the metaphysis is the metaphysio diaphysial angle. If this angle is less than 11 degrees, this is an indication that this is a case of physiologic genoverum. This is not Blount disease. If it's more than 16 degrees, this is an indication that this is an infantile Blount. If it's between 11 and 16, this patient needs some sort of follow-up after a few months to, so, to see if it's increasing or decreasing. So this angle, how you draw this angle, you draw the lateral border of the tibia and you draw perpendicular. This will be the diaphysis. And then you draw a line uh, um, uh, over the widest part of the metaphysis. The angle here is the metaphysial diaphysial angle. And um, if it's more than 11, if it's more than 16, it's an indication for blount. If it's less than 11, it's an indication of physiologic genoverum. If it's in between, you reassess after a few months. So this patient presenting here with obvious genoverum bilaterally. So this is uh, obvious genoverum. It's uh, obviously a severe case of genoverum. So you'd like to see is this is physiologic genoverum or this is a case of Blount disease. So this is an 18 month uh, old um, and you would like to know the, uh, the diagnosis to help you because for physiologic genoverum, you will uh, uh, reassure the family and just wait. If it's a Blount disease, you need to apply braces as we are going to see at the end when we discuss the treatment option. So what do we do? We draw, uh, we draw the angles that we discussed before, the metaphysio diaphysial angle. Uh, and here is the drawing here for the metaphysial diaphysial angle. So uh, here is the line of the uh, 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 of this uh, tibia, uh, and between the, the angle uh, of the perpendicular to this line and this line uh, is the um, uh, difference between 90 degree and 72. So this is an 18 degree. So the angle here between this uh, uh, line. Uh, and uh, this line here is 72 degree, meaning that if I draw a perpendicular to this line, as we said in the previous, and we draw the angle between the perpendicular and this line, it will be 18 degree, or actually it will be 17.2. Uh, so um, this here is the metaphysial diaphysial angle. So metaphysial angle is this uh, line here and then the perpendicular to it with the metaphysis. So it is the angle between the perpendicular to this line and the metaphysis. So it is the difference between 90 and 72. It's a, a 0.8, so it's a 17.2. Um, again, now we draw all these lines uh, with the PAC system. So uh, we don't have to draw the, the real lines, but if you're drawing it, so you'll draw this line and then you'll draw a perpendicular to this line. And then you'll draw a line across the widest area of the metaphysis. And then this will tell you the angle uh, here we draw the line here across the widest area of the metaphysis and the line across the diaphysis and the angle between them is 72.8 meaning that the angle between the perpendicular to, to this line and this line will be 17.2 so this is a case of uh, Blount because it's more than 16. Same here so we draw a line here along the lateral part of the tibia and then a line along the widest area of the metaphysis the angle between them is 73.3 so this means if i draw a perpendicular here to this line to the to the line of the uh, diaphysis and i draw the angle between the, that line and this line it will be about uh, 16. Uh, point, uh, uh, seven, so it is more than 16, so it is uh, a case of bilateral Blount disease. So this patient here, 18 month, presenting with obvious genoverum, severe, you'd like to differentiate if it's physiologic or not. You draw the line between the uh, perpendicular to the diaphysis. You draw the diaphysis along the lateral border of the tibia. This is the easiest thing. And then you draw a perpendicular to this line, and then you draw a line across the 
metaphysis and this will tell you exactly the angle in this case here we draw a line across the lateral part of the tibia and the line across the um, widest part of the metaphysis it was 72 so this means that the uh, line perpendicular to this uh, uh, line here will have about 17.2 and here it will be about uh, uh, 16.7 so both are bilateral bound because they are more than 16 degree this is another patient same thing patient presenting with bilateral genoverum two year old so you would like to see is this uh, case of physiologic genoverum physiologic bow leg or its case of um, uh, blount disease so uh, we will do the same thing uh, we will uh, do the angles that we showed before and you can see here we draw a line per, uh, along the lateral uh, uh, border of the tibia and then you draw perpendicular to this and you draw a, as the angle between the perpendicular to this line and the, the metaphysis which is the widest area in this case uh, in both sides it actually uh, uh, was between 11 and 16 so in this side uh, this is 77 meaning that uh, the angle uh, between the perpendicular and this line uh, will be uh, 12 uh, or 13 degrees so this um, is between 11 and 16 here the angle between the lateral border of the uh, tibia and the metaphysis was um, uh, 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 74 meaning that the perpendicular on the um, uh, diaphysis and the metaphysis will have about uh, 15 degree 15.4 so uh, both right and left angle uh, shows um, uh, angles between 11 and 16 so that indicates that this case may be uh, blunt or physiologic depending on other uh, x-rays finding and uh, on the, uh, um, the uh, also on the uh, uh, observation and follow-up uh, one thing I'd like to show you in this x-ray, you see here, this um, what we call metaphysial peaking. Metaphysial peaking in which you see it's more obvious here in this side. On the right side, you see usually the metaphysis here will look like this. Will look uh, 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 the, uh, the 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 metaphysis will will be in this part here. The metaphysis goes down and peaks like this. Uh, here uh, it's less obvious than this one, but you can see here this area here which peaks. Um, here there is a mild peaking, but obviously it is more on this side. That peaking means that the metaphysis will go down sloping and go out like this. Um, the normal metaphysis will be uh, here like this. Uh, it will be uh, pointing medially, but it pointing medially in the same level. When it start pointing medially and down like this, this is what called medial peaking, and this is one of the early signs also of uh, uh, blount disease. So this is the same patient here one year after we treated the patient with the brace because this patient is young and can be treated with a brace uh, early disease as we're going to see at the end of the lecture when we speak about the uh, outline of treatment. So this is one year after we uh, treated the patient. She's getting better. Um, I wanted to present this x-ray because it shows more the peaking here. So if you see the normal uh, uh, metaphysis in uh, kids will look like this and will go down here uh, that's called the metaphysial peaking in which um, uh, the metaphysis will not be here it will go down and it will peak down like this you can see it here to a less degree but obviously it's here uh, with this um, sloping down and then it goes like this so this is signs of um, uh, uh, early blown disease and uh, in this case it's actually um, uh, uh, in the follow-up we still can see this signs here of the metaphysial peaking especially on the right side so after we talked about the infantile blount we're going to speak about the adolescent blount adolescent blount is not as common as the infantile blount the disease is more common in adolescent obese boys uh, and you will see obvious various deformity so if, when you see the child there is obvious various deformity and it can be unilateral or bilateral 
So adolescent blount less common than, than in the infantile type. The disease is more common in uh, adolescent obese boys. There is obvious various deformity that you can see it. And the condition can be unilateral or bilateral. The radiographs will show the obvious various deformity of the proximal uh, tibia. You can see here, this is the X-ray of the patient that we just saw. Obviously, he's um, uh, uh, morbidly obese, as you can see from the soft tissue shadow here. And you can see the obvious various deformity here uh, uh, with marked um, uh, various or uh, that the distal part of the tibia is pointing uh, medially. So the radiographs will show obvious various deformity and uh, the growth plate will not have that same changes that we uh, see in the, uh, the infantile type. Here we can see two more examples of Blount disease. Uh, this is an obese boy, adolescent. You can see the soft tissue here. Uh, and here he has left side Blount disease. You can see the difference between the right side and the left side. There is obvious various deformity uh, of the uh, left uh, lower extremity. Usually cases of unilateral Blount will have limb limb discrepancy. You can see that the left side is shorter than the right side. Uh, here is another example of um, um, mild uh, adolescent blount in adolescent girl. You can see here, this is the mechanical axis. This faint line here is the mechanical axis of the right side. It is very close to the middle uh, or the central uh, center part of the knee. Here, the mechanical axis of the femur, as you can see here in this line, is outside the knee. It's on the inner side, which indicating varus. So this patient has a mild blount disease here of the left tibia. So these are two uh, more examples of radiographs of adolescent uh, type blount. Uh, both are unilateral. And in cases, as I, I said, the unilateral blount usually have limb blood discrepancy. The affected side is usually shorter than the, uh, the other side, as you can see here, the difference in the length. And as you can see here, the difference in the length. So let's speak now about uh, the treatment of blount disease, outline of the treatment of blount disease. For the infantile type, this has to be treated because it's a progressive disease. If you don't treat them, the child will progress. Um, in young kids, uh, age um, uh, two and three year old, uh, uh, the treatment is by brace. Uh, so what is the brace? It, uh, it corrects the various deformity and it push the kid to vulgus, as you can see here. So this patient has um, uh, a varus. So we apply uh, um, a brace to push uh, the uh, lower leg or the outer side so we can produce vulgus um, uh, moment to correct the varus that this patient has. Um, if uh, there is no improvement uh, or the patient is four years or older, the treatment is surgical. So uh, first thing in the infantile, we start with braces, especially for children two and three years old. We put them in a brace, in the KAFO, knee, ankle, foot orthosis, uh, that produces vulgus to correct the varus that the patient has. If there is no improvement or if the patient is four years and older, the treatment is surgical. Cases of infantile blount, if they don't respond to braces or they present at the age of four years or older, the treatment, as we said, is mostly sur uh, uh, surgical. And because these kids are still growing and they have uh, uh, strong growth potential through their growth plate, usually the treatment for them is not cutting the bone, is not osteotomy. But what we do is we use that growth in the growth plate to uh, help us correct the deformity. How we do that? We stop the growth of this side, of the lateral side, allowing the medial side to grow. And when it grow from one side, not from the other, this will push the leg to this side. So we have here this patient, um, a five-year-old patient presenting with um, a unilateral uh, blount. You can see the difference here, the mechanical axis in the middle of the knee. Here, the mechanical axis is medial to the uh, uh, knee. And you can see, obviously, the virus here in this side compared to this side. So uh, what uh, we did is we, as I said, we used the, the, the plate as a growth uh, modulation. So we put a small plate here on the lateral side. So this will stop the growth from here, allowing the growth of here, which is already slow, but it will now get time to uh, an opportunity to uh, uh, work um, on one side only. So it will push the leg to this side, causing correction of the deformity. And you can see here, 
uh, uh, one and a half year after we did the uh, surgery so we stopped the growth from here this allowed this to grow so you can see the growth plate now becoming more healthy on that medial side so compare it to this and compare it to this you can see the difference here the growth plate is definitely now a healthy position and you can see that the, the deformity that this patient has the varus is now corrected uh, and he even is in a slight uh, vulgus so uh, infantile scoliosis uh, i'm sorry infantile uh, um, uh, blount when they don't uh, respond to braces or they present after the age of three treatment is surgical most time it's uh, growth modulation uh, how do we do the growth modulation there are different ways um, uh, most famous ways to use a small plate over the lateral aspect here so we stop the growth here allowing the bone to grow only from here and that will push the bone this way so um, and that will correct the virus to uh, neutral or even mild vulgus uh, and then you can remove the plate so you can see here this is after, shortly after we put the plate so we're stopping the growth here allowing the bone here to grow this is one and a half year you can see here the growth plate looks much healthier on the medial side and uh, there is mild vulgus so we take this plate off and allow the patient now to grow from both sides so for cases of adolescent blount uh, that's different the growth plate is not as active so we cannot really depend on growth modulation in these cases we do osteotomy which basically means bone cutting so we cut the bone and and when we push the bone to the outer side to correct the varus so this uh, one of the cases that we presented before unilateral uh, uh, blount adolescent um, so uh, what we did is we did something called high tibial osteotomy in which we cut the bone here and then we do an open wedge um, and we push this bone uh, the tibia um, to neutral position correcting the deformity uh, you can see here this is the follow-up the mechanical axis is fully corrected it's not in varus anymore so this is called high tibial osteotomy and um, uh, in which what we use this is what we use for uh, cases of adolescent blount because we cannot use uh, their growth potential as they are closed um, to the end of their skeletal growth so there is not enough uh, growth remaining to correct the deformity uh, by uh, modulation of the growth so we do uh, um, in most cases acute correction by the uh, osteotomy and internal fixation thank you and i hope this video was useful uh, please note that all my videos are for educational purpose only and please consult your doctor before any decision